session. It's really nice to meet you. Can you let us know a little bit about yourself? Hi, good morning, Palasa. Sure. Um, well, I'm Astrid Salazar, and I was born in Belmopan and raised here in Benke all my life. And um, both of my parents are here from Benke. Um, I grew up with my mother, and she's a retired teacher now, Ms. Rosita Silva. So my, my mom is a single mother. She raised me on her own, and she's been my, my role model and um, my main motivation, you know. So I always, when in school, I always, you know, my concentration and my focus has had always and still is my studies, you know. that can be of great financial help for my mom. So I recall when I was in, in Ford Farm, I found the newspaper and advertisement to go study in England. It was a full scholarship to pursue a bachelor's degree. And um, at the time I told my mom, I'm still 17 and I'm, I'm young, I'm not mature enough to go on the other side of the world, 5,000 miles away and, and live alone, right? So I told her, I'll do my sixth form here, and when the opportunity comes again, I will apply, and I'll get my scholarship, because it was one of my dreams to go study in England. So I went to Sacred Heart Junior College, and I majored in accounting and international business. It was a double major that, that I did in, in two years, so I had to be taking more courses than normal to, to finish. And when I was in my second year in sixth form, I was browsing the newspapers and I saw the advertisement there again to go study in England for, for a bachelor's degree and I was like, this is my chance. So all along while I was studying, I always focused on, on my books, my education and I maintained a 4.0 GPA throughout my two years in, in sixth form. That meant no parking, you know. At a young age, you want to, you know, you, you're starting to live life and you want to explore and go out with your friends and this, and this and that. But I was like, there will be a time for that. There is always a time for everything. It's always better to focus on your education first because, like you said, there's always time for, for us to go part and stuff because that's the same situation I'm in. Yes. I focus more on my education at the moment. I'm doing my bachelor's degree in accounting and I try my best because I'm working, handling work and studies at the same time and it's difficult. I, so I understand your situation. Yes, you know, and, and I always I always tell people, you know, the sacrifice you make the sacrifices you make today will pay off in the future. So that's why for me it was always my books and when I saw the the advertisement I decided to apply. And you know, like you know, you you always as well, my, as as well, you know, I will. And every anyone who talks to me will always hear me say, "Dios, Dios primero, uno en las manos de Dios, y después lo 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 que yo quiero, no." So um, I applied for the the scholarship, and one day I received a letter and a call, you know, that I was invited for an for an interview, and um, and. I had um, lecturers at the junior college that offered to help me to prepare for this interview. And interestingly enough, I chose the last interview that they were doing, which was on January 18th, which is my birthday. And I chose the last time slot. And when I went there in front of the panelists, they were like, why did you choose the last day and the last slot when you you know, we've already interviewed everyone, and I was like, because today is my birthday, so I think I will get the scholarship. I think it would be my birthday gift. So um, I did this, the, the interview and everything, and the next morning I woke up to a phone call that I got my scholarship. It's, to really, to it's a really, really interesting story. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, I always remember it, and I remember when I went to, to the junior college, they were like, Astrid, are you sure you're about the scholarship? Are you sure? And I'm like, yes, I got the call this morning. So. So, um, that meant going away um, to England.
Zealand to live for three years, I went and it's not hard going away from home. You know, when when I arrived and I settled in, as I stayed at student dorms, and over there they call it student village, and an apartment is called a flat. So I stayed at a flat on the university. And when I was alone in my room, that's when it kicked in, that I was 5,000 miles away from home. And my next flight to come home wasn't until April of the, of the next year, because the scholarship gave us two flights to come home. So it was until Easter, you know, but as much as you miss home, you know, you have to keep your eye on the prize, you know, and, and remain focused. That's what it is. Always what making that sacrifice to move forward. Yes, because it, it will pay off in the end, you know, if you have your, your dreams or, and goals, and one of my dreams was going to England, you know, you have to work hard for it. So I... While I was studying, and um, not many people know this, but I was, I got sick in England, and um, I it turned out I had a kidney stone stuck in my ureter. I ended up there, um, ended up at emergency. I had been three days in my room and um, fever and vomiting, and I couldn't eat. So the third day, everything got worse, and my friends had to rush me to the hospital, and I was hospitalized for two weeks. And I underwent two surgeries in England. Thankfully, the healthcare over there is free, so I, I didn't have to pay anything. And when I got medications, I only paid a flat rate, right? Um, but I continued with my health condition for the three years that I was in England, and it was a struggle because sometimes, you know, kidney stones give you pain, yes. but you know, you have to get through the pain, and you know, manage, drink your medications and everything while you're undergoing treatment and then you continue and you know you still go to school and focus on it. My mom had to bring me back to Belize and um, I was in my second year of university and because over there it's uh, it's free healthcare they put you on, on a list you know how urgent your situation is and so I wasn't at the top of the list you know I was still managing but I was missing classes because sometimes I couldn't get out of bed. So my mom brought me back to Belize and took me to Guatemala and then um, to get surgery. And at the university, the university they told me, you have to be back by February 14th. If not, you have to withdraw for one year. And I'm on a scholarship, I can't withdraw for, for one year. So um, we came, we went to Guatemala, and then um, we spoke with the doctor, and um, I was able to, to get the treatment and everything that, that I needed, and I was back in England before February 14th to resume the second semester in, in my second year to be able to continue and finish my, my studies. I still had some problems after that surgery with, you know, the same condition, but thank God I, I graduated um, and with a bachelor's degree in accounting and finance and I came back home and I started working. So It's a very, very interesting story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this would help anyone who's watching to know the difficulties that someone can go while being away from home, pursuing their education. But it's always good to know that there is ways to come out of any situation like that and keep pushing forward to continue with our education in New York City. Yes, definitely. You know, um, it's, it's not easy. It gets hard. You, you are faced with obstacles. But you know, you have to find that, that drive and passion within you, you know, to keep pushing forward. Scholarships. So um, the OS, 
they always have scholarships. It's not fully funded, but sometimes it might range from 20, 30 to 50 percent. Sometimes you find scholarships that are 85 or 90 percent funded, right? Um, I found this scholarship to pursue a master's degree in, in project management. There it was, you could either get 50 percent or 90 percent funding. So I said, you know what? It's, it's becoming, you know, it's um, the demand for skills in project management is increasing in Belize. So let me pursue a degree where I can, where the skills and the, the knowledge that I will obtain can help me, you know, to, to contribute to the, to the national development of my home country. Because I am passionate about the development of Belize and I applied for the scholarship. When I got an email from the OS that they were offering me a 50% scholarship, you know, having gotten a 100% scholarship for the bachelor's degree, you're like, I want, you, I want another 100%. I don't have the money to pay for the other 50%. And I was like, like this, of turn, at this point, you know, I was going to turn down the scholarship. And then my mom was like, you know, I spoke with, with another teacher, and um, I always remember um, Miss, Miss Consi Hyde. Um, she told my mom, tell Astrid that these opportunities sometimes only come once in a lifetime. It might, if she turns it down, they might not offer her a scholarship again, you know? It, it's better to, to make the sacrifices and see how you can, you can pursue your, your degree. So my mom gave me the message and I was sitting there and I was like, you know what mom, I will accept the scholarship, I'll go to DFC, I'll apply for a student loan and hopefully I can get it and that will pay for the other 50% of, of my, um, my education. And thankfully the university had payment plans as well where initially before I was able to secure a student loan, you could pay by monthly installments. So the monthly installments were was a little bit easy, you know, and then once the loan came in, I switched to making payments every every three months, and I used to, to make the payments. And all along I was working, so I had a normal eight to five job, and I had to wake up around six, five thirty, six, you know, take the bus to commute to Belmopan, and then, you know, when you come out from work at five, you have to go to the bus terminal, you know, wait for your bus home. The struggle is hard. And coming back, it's hard. It's difficult, but you know, you, you have to, you know, it, it's hard when you already start working and you start to have expenses, you know, and of course, I, you know, I have to help my mom. She, she sacrificed so much for me when I was growing up, you know, it's time for me to do something for her. So, um, you know, I continued, I, I was working and working and when I would come at night, I would do my assignments sometimes. I, sometimes I would be up 10, 11, 12 at night on calls over Zoom or, um, I can't recall if Zoom was a thing at that time, but you know, you had video calls, you know, like Google Hangouts and things like that as well. But, um, you know, you do your assignment because it was a lot of group work and you know, just continue there. I took a year break from work though to finish my, my thesis and then in 2015 I, I finished my, all of my schoolwork and then, um, well, thank, thank God I, I finished the master's degree. That's really nice. Yes. So this is another interesting story as well. I have a passion for community service and giving back to my community. One of the things I always tell myself is an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So before you end up doing things that you shouldn't and ending, in, ending up in trouble, you know, find something constructive to do. And the best way to do that, you know, is to give back to your community, to, to the less fortunate, because sometimes we think we are in a bad condition, but we are in, we are in heaven or we are in glory, because 
I hear other people that have it harder than us. So I was in sixth form at the time when I learned about Rotaract. And um, Rotaract is a, is a group of, of young people between the ages of 18 and 30 years old, you know. And you get together, you do community service, and you also have, um, you can also do activities, you know, to engage in professional development, to learn about more things. And it's a worldwide network, right? So there are Rotaract clubs that are all around the world. I received an invitation to join a Rotaract, the Rotaract Club in San Ignacio at the time, but I had received the scholarship to go to England, so I couldn't join, so I had to turn down the invitation. When I came back in 2009, I wanted to do community service and join Rotaract, um, and then I remember um, receiving an invitation to a meeting at the San Ignacio, at the store club in the San Ignacio Hotel and we were there and um, this Rotaract Club of San Ignacio had gone dormant. So um, there were like three of us that were there that night that we decided to go forth with, with the Rotaract Club and we started to recruit more people and we revived the club, the Rotaract Club of um, of San Ignacio in 2012. I was in that club for about two years and I used to have to go to San Ignacio for weekly meetings every Friday night and community service activities would be in San Ignacio or surrounding villages in that area and after a while it's the expense starts to, to add up, you know, driving and if, if you don't, if your vehicle is not working or not available you have to take a taxi and everything and sometimes it's late at night and I was the president of the club so I had to be there so um, the idea came to start a Rotaract club in Benke Viejo so um, I was like okay I want to start a club in, in, in my hometown get the youth involved you know we'll, we'll be doing something worthwhile and I started to contact a lot of um, a lot of friends that I had here in Benke and I told them you can ask your um, you can ask your friends, you know, here in Benke and Sokox, Aurelio Guerra, um, Debbie Alfaro, Edson Mangifar, and um, we had Yamil Montero who joined the club. Um, and we had several other other persons. It was about 15 of us that came together to, to start to start the club. And um, and we founded the, the Rotaract Club of um, Benke Viejo in 2014. And I and we used to do a lot of activities to give back to the community. And I was in Rotaract for a total of five years. But then I moved. After a while, I had to move to Belize City because I got a job there. And um, so I went. I when I reached 30 years old, you know, you, you have to to move out from Rotaract. And the idea is once you re, once you come out from Rotaract, you transition into a Rotary Club. So um, Rot Rotary, um, it's like, it, we have like 1.4 million Rotarians around the world. I think it's over 40,000 clubs that there are world worldwide. But I took a break, like two years I think I took a break. And I was like, should I join Rotary? I got invitations in Belize City to go to join clubs there. Then there's the club here in San Ignacio, and I was undecided until I until Miss Cynthia Reese from the Rotary Club of San Ignacio. Rotaract mama. <laughs> yes, she's she's the Rotaract mama. She messaged me, you know, we want to start a Rotary Club in Benke. Would you be interested? And I was like, sure. And we had our first our first meeting. And then we had some people there, and we were asked to, you know, to recruit more persons. And um, we had a second meeting on February 15th, 2019, and it was about 10 persons that we were there, and we decided, you know, we will start the Rotary Club. But we need to be a full club, we need 20 to 25 persons, and we were nowhere close to that. So, we couldn't start as an independent Rotary Club, so we are a satellite club of the Rotary Club of San Ignacio. 
it's like we are part of their club, our members are members of the Rotary Club of San Ignacio in a sense, but we are also in the, independent from them, but our name, Alias Carries Rotary Satellite Club of San Ignacio Ecuadia. Until we can reach the minimum requirements of about 25 persons, then we can, we can start the process to become a full independent club and we will be known as the Rotary Club of Benquevia. Can you share with us what are the requirements to join the Rotary Club, the Rotary Club of San Ignacio and Benquevia? So you need to, if, if you want to join, um, I mean you, you don't have to be 30 years old to join the Rotary Club. And now, for example, the Rotaractors, they can have dual membership. They can be a Rotaractor and a Rotarian as well. That's so there's, for those that are in Rotaract, they can do that. If someone, whoever wants to, to join Rotary, you know, we have a Facebook and an Instagram page where you can contact us or you can contact any of our members to ask when our next meeting will be and we will invite you to, to our meeting. We require you know, you know, for you to participate in some of the in some of the meetings, and as well to participate in a com community service project. Once we see the the commitment from you, our club will invite you to become a a, a member to become a agrarian, and then we start that process to to be able to induct and pin the person as a as a rotarian. It's quite fun. And um, we do have a monthly membership fee of forty dollars because we have to pay fees to Rotary International, you know. Um, but it, it's a group, you know. You have people from different professions in the club, different um, walks of life, and we're all passionate and committed about making a change in our community. It's always good. So it's the same process as the Rotaract Club of Ecuador, that you become a prospect first after the three first meetings that you attend consecutively, and then moving on, you become, uh, after you participated in a community service, they, their, their uh, executive board, I believe, yes. is the one to decide if you are ready to join the club as a member. In, in our case, the executive board looks at the application and they make a decision, but then it has to be presented to the entire club and the general assembly, we call it general assembly, which would be the entire membership of the club then votes to accept you into, into our club. Oh, that's interesting, interesting. I so, didn't know that. <laughs> so that, that's how we do it in, in, in our club. And then, you know, once the club is in agreement, then we have a little ceremony we celebrated Right, um, on February 15th, we celebrated our three-year anniversary. Um, it was like a virtual, since you know, due to, due, to, due to the pandemic, everything is virtual. It was like a virtual social, and um, and we inducted two members into our club. So we have about, I think it's about 14 or 15 members right now. If you're missing like around 10 members, yes. we would need to reach at least 20 persons. And it's what is recommended to, to have 25 persons. So, um, you know, we're always looking for, for persons who, who, are, um, who are interested in, in, in making a difference, you know. It's, um, you, you get to network, you know, with people from your own hometown, from your community. There, you get to network with persons from the country because we have we have other Rotary clubs in the East and because worldwide you get to network with persons from all over the world. So it's like a one big family, you know. It's always making friends outside of the country as yes. well. Um, do you have any future projects you're working on at the moment? So on um, this past Sunday we installed our um, bio barrier, which is um, which is installed at the entrance of, of Benca Viejo by where La Matanza is. So um, the, barrio, the Bio Barrier is one of our signature projects. We, um, it's installed across the river. It's, it's tied to, three, to trees on both ends. 
and it's a way for us to stop garbage from flowing downstream, which will eventually end in end up in other towns and villages, and then end up in the sea. So um, that's our signature project. We 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 call for people, you know, to properly dispose of their of their garbage. We need to take care of the environment, you know. Um, so you know, put your garbage in in garbage bags, and you know when it's the day that they, they will pass collecting the garbage, then you bring your garbage out, you know, do not be littering, showing it on the streets, or, you know, when you go to the river, don't just leave your garbage there on the riverside, put it in a trash bag, and then when you find a garbage bin, just dispose of it there. Um, it doesn't happen a lot, um, you know, that, that we sometimes properly dispose of our garbage, so that's why we saw the need for for the bio barrier and sometimes you will pass there and you'll see that there is a lot of garbage that collects there so we constantly go there and clean it as well and um, if anyone ever wants to volunteer to help us clean the bio barrier um, so you're more than welcome to, to come and help us it, it takes a lot of work to, to, clean, to clean it I mean the Rotara Club is constantly helping us as well and we have a we have a food sale that's coming up on Sunday, March 27th, where we'll be selling in carne a la plancha, either chicken, I think it's pork, but we'll be selling carne a la plancha and it will come in with, with sides and in for $10 a, a plate. And the goal of this fundraiser is to raise funds so that we have money to be able to do future community service um, projects. And it's not only in Benque Viejo. We work in um, we've done we've worked with Arenal in Guatapol area, San Jose Socots, Colosalito, Calacri. So it's all the, the communities here. The areas. Yes, that, that we help. And you know we, we try find ways to to, to help the, the community. So anyone who wants to contribute to this fundraiser is welcome to call anyone of uh, any member of the Rotary, Rotary Club, or you can message directly the page. Yes, we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. It's called the Rotary Club of Rotary Satellite Club of San Ignacio Benque Viejo. So you can message us there to, to place your order, or if you know any Rotarian who is a part of the club, you can also call um, call us. We are also having a fun fundraiser end of month on Sunday, March 27th. We are doing a, um, a sale of carne, carne a la plancha. It's um, chicken or beef with, um, with baked potato, pico de gallo, beans, and corn tortilla. It's $10, $10 a plate. And um, the idea of this um, food sale that we are doing is to raise funds for future community services service project that we want to do in the area and um, you can find us on, on Facebook and Instagram as Rotary Satellite Club of San Ignacio Benque Viejo. You can send us a message to place your order, you can contact any member of the club as well to place your order or you can um, send us a message on WhatsApp at 622-8353 and message us to place your order. You can, um, on Sunday, March 27th at 12, we will be at the Benke Market Plaza, where you can come and, and pick up your, your, um, your plate of food. You can pay ahead of time, or you, you, you pay when you're um, picking up your food. So we are looking for, for everyone's support, and we will really, greatly appreciate, you know. By purchasing, to, by, by purchasing, you would be helping the Rotary, the Rotary Satellite Club, which will help, would be helping as well the community in one way or another. So please support this cause. Um, lastly, to end our conversation, would you like to send a message to the woman in general? Yes. Um, you know, my message is, you know, um, believe, believe in yourself. Um, 
even if no one else does, you have to believe in yourself. You have to be confident, confident about what you have, what, what you bring to, to the table. Um, there will be doubters, there will be non-believers, but don't let them get inside of your head. Fight for, fight for your dreams, for your goals. You will be faced with a lot of obstacles, but the sacrifices that, that you make today will be worth it one, two, three, or even ten years from now, you know? So, so just remain, remain focused and, and go after what, what ignites passion and, and fire in your heart. Thank you, Ms. Ashley, for having us. It, it was a pleasure having this conversation with you. This was Vanessa Salazar, Chulito Movies, Benke Viejo.